What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Charlie Chuck Wagon Davies, joined with Heath Hollywood Pierce. We're missing our guy, Jim Conrad. Jimmy is out in Manchester at Old Trafford for the big matchup against Liverpool today. But YouTube fam, we love you. We support you. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. So let's get to it. In Soccer We Trust is a finalist for the best sports podcast category. Being a finalist is awesome news, but we can't do anything. We got to go one step further and win this thing because, Heath, how many times have we been up for these awards, but we're not Shoot. winning? Yeah, so we got to go. Low. Get that W. So for those of you that mentioned us, thank you. But we're going to need your help as some of you will be selected at random to vote again. So check your inboxes because some of you will be asked to cast a final ballot. Let's do this. The, the In Soccer We Trust podcast celebrates the beautiful game of soccer and covers every corner of the U.S. soccer ecosystem, from grassroots to the senior national team and everything in between. In Soccer We Trust provides news, views, fan culture, and expertise on the red, white, and blue three times a week. So don't forget Heath, your boy, and Jimmy. So now you can represent your favorite podcast with official In Soccer We Trust podcast gear only found on the CBS Sports Store. Discover t-shirts, mugs, hats, bags, water bottles, and more. Right now, in Soccer We Trust podcast listeners, will get you guys will get a whopping 20% off their order when you use this podcast exclusive code SOCCER20 during checkout. So let's get to it. That's Soccer 20 again, and it's only available for our listeners. Head over to store.cbssports.com and shop now. So let's get to the Premier League recap. And also, Heath, how are you doing? It's always good to see you. Charlie, we got, I mean, listen, man, that was a pretty good start. We got a long way to go to get that energy up. Uh, you know, Jimmy's out there. I can see the thing is I, I accidentally came in on my on my work email today, so I can see the back end. Jimmy's jumping around in the background. Uh, but, uh, he's, he's not with <laughs> us at the moment, but I'm doing good, man. The weekend was great. Uh, I thought it was another great weekend for Americans abroad. You know, we're kind of on this roller coaster. We seem to do really well or really bad, but we can get even better. So I'm excited to talk about it. How was your weekend, man? Saw you, uh, I saw you, uh, jumped ship, went to another country and came back. Yeah. Went to Toronto, came back, went to Montreal, came back, went to the mm -hmm. Cape. Now I'm in Boston. Things are flying, but all in all, I got to watch a lot of soccer. I'm proud. I am proud of the boys, what they're doing over at Leeds United. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just in general, the guys were balling this weekend. Mo most of the U.S. men's national team player pool were out there doing their thing. So I'm excited. But we do have a special guest today, Heath. I know it's you and I, but we do have a special guest. So should, we, should we bring him on? Yeah, let's bring him on. It's all let's, about special let's guests. Bring him on. Let's bring him on. Whoa. Da, da, oh. da, 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 da. Let's go. Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? Charlie, I, I need a little more energy from you on the intro. That's yeah, awesome. I knew it. I knew I knew he was gonna say I, that. I, I knew he was gonna say that. Have the air horn. Come on. Yeah, but that's you true, know, you know, you gotta you just gotta you gotta ramp it up, Chuck. You know, and and Jimmy, I'm I mean not gonna it helps lie. if you have a drum or megaphone. I agree. I agree. For, first of all, Jimmy, I I don't want to get to uh, ahead of ourselves where are you right now because uh one your connection's fantastic but two you know and you look great but where are you thanks i'm at old trafford which okay. is manchester united's famous stadium and they're playing liverpool tonight mm. so uh, i decided that yeah it's gonna maybe interrupt me hosting in soccer we trust but it's just I had a digital it. background. This is, this is a, this is a story. Yeah. I mean, this it, is a it looks like a green screen. It looks like a green it's, screen. It's a green screen. It, no, look, there's people okay, push, okay, push somebody then, Jimmy. Push them. Make, show I'm us that these people are real. Five? No, no high five. There we go. I got one. <laughs> okay, oh, yeah, now it shows. Okay, okay. What's up, dude? How are you? Oh, we got a Jimmy Conrad shout. Nice to meet you. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen tonight? I hope for Liverpool. Liverpool went, oh, you can't say that out here. What are you? Shh. That's true. Most of the law. Very nice meeting you, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, too. all right. See you around. Sorry, Is he set up in front of a trash can, by the way? Because people just keep I am. coming by and tossing me. I can get yeah. like a standard. standard uh, I th yes. It looks like, for, for those of you that are listening to this in audio, it looks like Jimmy's out busking on the street because people keep walking <laughs> to where his camera is and tossing things hey, I have and to, like a little I have tip jar. But so far, I've, all I've seen is like empty cans and empty bottles. <laughs> yeah, paper, listen, plastic. Listen, I'm trying to save up for my In Soccer We Trust merch, you know? and got to take advantage of... Uh, so, so tell oh, us what you're going to be doing today, Jimmy. So I'm going to be at the game. I'm here with Ecolab. 
which is a sponsor of the club. And they do a lot of things behind the scenes to make everything cleaner and safer so that when people start to come back to the stadiums, it's just a really healthy experience. So I'm here partnering with them. And uh, one of the benefits of that was to go to the game. And I went to training yesterday. So I talked to Christian Erickson and Harry Maguire and uh, Fred. And uh, that was so pretty cool to see on those the guys. Soon? Uh, I didn't go that far, but uh, <laughs> Jimmy, why aren't you but wearing I your in soccer? We trust shirt today. You yeah, know what I mean? You know, the rules. We, get, we make it in red as well. So you can be comfortable there. That's true. I, I'm definitely. Yeah, of course. Yeah. One second, boys. I got to take oh, a he, photo. He got a he got famous out there. Nice to meet you. Jeez Louise. He honestly got shoved first. Hey, I, 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 I like this. Jimmy, Jimmy oh, on I'm the road so no is problem. good. Nice you know? to meet you. Yeah, Jimmy. Jimmy's great. Hey, Jimmy, what, what are they What are they saying over there to you about the Americans yesterday? Uh, in terms of you know, Brandon Aronson, Tyler Adams, Jesse Marsh, is there a, a, a more is there excitement around it's, Americans coming to the Premier League? Yeah, I think what it's doing is it's it's making us more credible. So now my friends that are over here in the UK, who I've obviously been reaching out to since I've been here, just to spend time with them if I can. I hear that Jesse Marsh is the real deal, and that Brendan Aronson can really play. Yeah, Tyler Adams is solid. You know, you get in a lot of that, and and I think we're continuing to you know, wipe away that perception that we're not very good at the game. And, and uh, obviously we got to keep proving it game after game after game. I love the comments from Brendan Aronson afterwards saying that, you know, Americans can play football too. And, and uh, he's going to be one of the people that's kind of paving the way for the next generation to come through. So is it's it, exciting. Is it, it's exciting. Jimmy, is it to yeah. a point where it's annoying you a little bit, especially when you're there, when, when, when people make these comments as if like Brendan Aronson is the first player to ever play in the Premier League or <laughs> Tyler Adams is the yeah. first player to have a yeah, solid like, game. Like yeah, Clint Dempsey didn't ball on these yeah. guys. I mean, it's, yeah. it's just uh, uh, like on one hand, I was really excited because it is another validator, you know, Jesse Marsh doing his thing. But on the other hand, I'm like, dude, I'm exo- like, what, what scale do you think we have to reach in terms of global success? Do you think it's the national team? Do you think it's club players playing at clubs before we get that level of respect where it's not... Like I, I, I started I, thinking you know, about like how many countries around the bit. world are, are, are having to go through this conversation constantly of being like, oh yeah, they're, it's getting better. Yeah, no, that's true. I guess, you know, as I met that guy, Yusuf, who uh, said he's Egyptian, that's why he's supporting Liverpool today. I'm like, I wonder if he has to always have to say, well, Egypt can play. Look at Mo Salah, you know? So yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just not tuned into that discourse or narrative that's happening in other countries, but it feels like we have to work extra hard just because it's probably just because we call the sport a different name, which is stupid, but, so, but so uh, that's at, part of this perception. You're at Old Trafford. Has there been any talk of Christian Pulisic coming to Manchester? Have, have, have fans been excited about that potential possibility or is it kind of like, no, we're good. We, that's well, not what we need. I, I think it's kind of going hand in hand with the news. Now that Anthony from Ajax is a possibility it's kind of either or. You're not going to get both of those guys, even though uh, there was talk of potentially getting Cody Gakpo as well from the Eredivisie. So, yeah, it's just it just feels like, and you guys know, and everybody else listening, they have a lot of those same players in those same spots that have proven they're good players. Rashford, Ilanga, uh, to name a few, Sancho. So it's, um, it's interesting that they're going to continue to look for those areas when they have other areas that I think need more attention. Casemiro obviously solved the A problem, but – they need now to solve some other issues. I think right back is an issue. I think maybe one more center back or Veron can come good. That solves some problems, but uh, they just seem like they're in good spirits. When I went to Carrington, the training facility yesterday, it was very, very cool. And, and there was not as much talk about Pulisic. I think what's more Brendan Aronson right now is kind of the talk of, of the country. And just, they just love his energy and, and, and his never say die spirit. I mean, even on the goal that he scored and, and stripped it from Edward Mendy, he gave the ball away initially, but then his immediate reaction to try to win it back, I think really sets the tone for who he is as a person and who he is as a player. And I think that really resonates with the fan base for Leeds and, and for other fans that are watching that, that we like this kid because he does these intangibles that maybe you're not seeing from other clubs like, like United. I think the fans just want to see them fight. So I'm, I'm expecting a good response from United against Liverpool tonight. Hey, Jimmy, uh, in, in terms of like going beyond that, obviously there's much more clubs in the London area than, than, than in Manchester in terms mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. the divisions. But w- what about our players kind of playing in the championship? Has there been any – have you have you heard from anybody in terms of the quality of the player or the performances of, of our championship players? Because we've got quite That's a few a, of them right now, including yeah, great question. Who, had a, who had a brace. Well, being, being in Manchester, get some Zach Steffen talk already. So definitely have had some conversations about him and – and it's funny, like, once he's not part of the mix anymore, they're like, how's he doing at Middlesbrough? You know, they kind of just, he's on loan. He's not really one of theirs anymore. So that, 
has its own. You tell him he's not doing it's, great. Is that what you said? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not I'm starting great. To stay positive. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm just trying to stay positive with regard to that. But um, but yes, Josh Sargent did get brought up to me this morning. Where just hey, when you put that guy in the number nine spot and give him a run of games, he can score some goals. And to the point where I thought he looked so dynamic, and I'm sure you guys thought the same thing. Where he's going to get. He, I almost think you got to bring him in at this point and give him another run out because he does provide a dynamic that maybe we haven't seen in some of our other players. So I'm actually glad he got this opportunity. And Greg's going to have some really tough choices. There's no getting around that. Well, you, you look at the other strikers, Jordan Pifok, goal and assist against Leipzig in a win yeah. for Union Berlin. Yeah. How'd you write well, a goal. brace mm-hmm. in a 5-2 win versus Trabonspor? You got you got Ricardo Pepe who's still coming off the bench. Um, he got twenty two minutes. It's yeah, he got twenty two minutes, which is an improvement. Better than the right? three minutes he got yeah. the week before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Jesus Ferrer missed because of of yellow cards uh, in the match against Nashville, and they got absolutely worked. Thanks for the the trash, the eco lab. Uh, much <laughs> love. Um, hey, Recycling is important, everybody. So so given that, how many strikers do you think Greg brings to to so the September? September. September? Yeah. yeah, I'd say four. I Four. think at this point, Ferreira comes in. Uh, I, I'm curious if he brings in Haji right again, given that he gave him a chance in June. Mm-hmm. If Jordan Peefock continues to score, I think you bring him in. Mm-hmm. Pepe might not get called in, man. He might be he might have played himself out of the World Cup, which is pretty crazy to think about, because especially I want to hear Heath's thoughts on that, because he's clearly Pepe's number one fan. But um, I think Josh Sargent. The funny thing is, when Timo Puki comes back in for, for Norwich, then you put Sergeant back out wide and he becomes kind of this hard working winger that doesn't really have or become too much of a threat up top. So I'm curious what they do with him when Pookie becomes healthy and everybody's an option. But I wouldn't mind seeing Sergeant get called back in just to give him that last run out. So you got P Falk, you got Sergeant, you got Ferreira. And then who am I missing somebody? I mean Haji Wright, I think, is an interesting one. Um, well the the other one is Brennan Vasquez. Brandon Vasquez. Yeah, I would like to see Vasquez in as well. Yeah, it Vasquez looks like he just nice agreed pressure. to a new a new a new contract, which again I like yeah. because we get real hyped up about selling our players when they have a good six month window, aka Ricardo Pepe. I know that he for- yeah. he sort of forced his hand on that. But Jimmy, just to respond on the Ricardo Pepe front, like he they 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 sort of made their bed going to Augsburg. I don't think that was ever gonna be the right move. I think we all agreed on that when it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, again, for me as a defender, Jimmy, you as a defender, no problem. We'll go to Augsburg. We'll fight it out. We'll, we'll whatever, yeah, but we're sure. being judged differently. But for a striker that is as young as he is to go into a situation where you're not going to get a lot of chances, it's kind of chaotic. You're fighting relegation. I think he's going to find himself unless he gets a last minute, uh, loan move, which I'm hoping for to somewhere where he can be in positions to develop as a striker and score goals. It's still on him. A lot of it's still on him. It's going to come down to him, but yeah, he could have played himself out right now for September. And if you're out of September, you're going to have to be in fantastic form to get a World Cup call. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I'm going to jump in, Charlie. I think yeah. Keith is right that if you can't – if you don't get called into September, I think you're you're pretty much out. Um, unless you were hurt and you're like a Gio Reyna and they want to be thoughtful about that and happy to see that he got some relatively meaningful minutes uh, in his first game back in the Bundesliga in, in many, many months. So that was exciting. Uh, I would say that I agree with you, though, that if you don't get called in in September, it's going to be very difficult for you to – get a look unless you go on some incredible tear i think greg's gonna want to know what you're about and and how you fit it and maybe more importantly how you fit in with the group uh leading into naming the roster which i don't even know when that is have they announced when the rosters have to be named no but but i can i can figure that out um and then in in terms of of bern aronson right you'd have to say he is for sure in the starting 11 after that performance against chelsea you can't you can't you can't can't, i know but you can't can't, imagine him not you can't imagine him not starting in, in the World Cup. So with that, he comes inside. He's an inverted winger. He goes all over the place. But mm-hmm. the player that he would be making room for when he does come inside is Serginho Des. Now, I know there, there's been talk about him going to United. Has yeah. has anyone brought that name up since he, he was a fan of Eric Ten Hag's? Yeah, so so Serginho Des is a name I've heard a few times and been talked about and asked about, like, how good is he as a player? And I basically say he's the opposite of Juan Basaka that he won't defend very well, but he can get bombed forward and get after it. Now, Wambasaka can't get forward all that well, but or does, but maybe doesn't have that final product in the attacking third, um, but but he can defend. And so I'm kind of curious, actually, if he starts tonight so he can lock down Luis Diaz and, and who United go with. But Dest is an option that I think they might not have in his skill set. And obviously that previous relationship with Ten Hag 
would be important in terms of his transition and, and expectations and, and Ten Hag already having that experience of knowing what to say and what buttons to push to get the most out of him. But I think that's the biggest thing with regard to, to that. Also, I should mention um, a lot of talk about Fulham and our Americans there. Anthony Robinson getting a lot of love. You know, Tim Ream having Fulham beat Brentford three to two. You know, Fulham's under their manager, Marcus Silva, have an identity of how they want to play. And, and uh, so there's been some talk about Fulham and kind of this revival of that club at Craven Cottage and, and the Americans part in it. So, yeah, a lot of positivity about the Americans to really kind of put a button on what you guys well, were asking before. Well, I'm curious. You're a center back. Mm-hmm. What, where is Tim Ream on the depth chart in your, in your He's mind? He's still on my up. If we're going three up and three down, I still got Tim Ream on the up until they lose or unless he makes some fatal flaws, fatal mistakes. I don't know. Again, he closed, he know, closed the guy down pretty slow this week, and Jimmy led to that uh, two-two. They ended up pulling did, it off, but did. like I was being hypercritical of like you know what's his involvement and in everything. But you know, like he had to, yeah, he got pulled sure. out wide for a cross, and and they were he, you know didn't close well, him down. That, that's, but that's a center back getting pulled wide. Right, right there, wide. as soon as you said out wide, he got pulled out wide. It's done. Yeah, yeah. there's no more. Yeah, yeah, right. So so that's where, the thing. If where, he has to where, cover him behind, you're right. You're right, Chuck. It's it's hard for him to maybe get out there and and be as impactful to close that space like we want. And we're probably going to need, especially if we have a attacking outside backs, which is what we do have. So I think that works against him. But he also is playing next to Anthony Robinson on a regular basis. Does that not count for something? If you want to have that 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 camaraderie and, and that understanding of how people move in, in high pressure situations, mm-hmm. there's something or at least a conversation to be had there. I'm curious if he'll get called in because I still feel like our even though Nashville played very well against FC Dallas this week, one four zero, and I, you know Walker was solid, and the whole team on Nashville was very solid. And that was a big test for him, right? Because he's going up against Ariola and, and Ferreira. Or Ferreira had the yellow cards. But it was still – they needed that, a nice comprehensive performance. The center back position for me is still kind of wide open, which is a little bit scary at this point. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, is, it is an interesting one. Do you, think, do you think you personally, Jimmy and Charlie, I want your take on this as well, feel like, you know, people like Josh Sargent, who is in form right now, um, granted not at, in, in the Premier League, or Tim Ream in the Premier League and in form in terms of playing consistently, getting results, knowing how to scrap and fight. Maybe that would have been valuable in, in World Cup qualifying, but in terms of World Cup, do you think he's honestly in the conversation for being called in? Or, you know, he was in, you know, he was in I, fantastic I form all last season. Um, yeah. On the way up, I, what, what's, what's changed? I, I don't think Tim Ream is is re- really in consideration. Um, I think he's he's on the chart, at least you know that there's a start. But in terms of the pace, the lack of pace, the lack of of mm-hmm. ability to play in in a high pressure situation, I think that really hurts hurts his stock. And so, you know, we talked about Mark McKenzie. When's he? Well, he's starting. He finally got two back to back ninety minute performances and two wins. So now he's coming along. Um, Matt Miazga comes back, and we know what he's capable of, but he's, he scored a goal against his former team, Red Bulls, and he plays 90 minutes. Um, you know, you have Chris Richards, who I think is is probably still 1B, you know, 2A in terms of you center think, backs. You think Chris Richards is going to the World Cup if he plays one minute every game for the next three months? Yes, I do. I don't know if he'll start, but I think he'd be yes, uh, 100%. on the bench. Yeah, but it's, especially it's, because he's in that role, right? He's, he's already kind of getting comfortable with being in a role where yes. if he's needed in a pinch, he can step up and play, which is essentially when I was in the team, I knew that I wasn't going to be the starter. So I needed to have a mindset that I was comfortable coming off the bench in any situation. But you were a starter at your Chris club, Richards, Jimmy. That's true. That's true. But I'm just saying you, you he's developing, at least he's developing a skill set that could still be of value in some capacity. It just depends on what Greg wants, man, and what he's looking for. Because there's, there's, with a lot of guys playing well, there's a lot of different narratives you can build. And then also, how does that player fit into the group? I think that there are players, when they're not playing, have, have a little bit of woe is me, feeling sorry for themselves, and that negative or negativity can impact some of the other players in the team, and that brings everybody down. He's had that a lot, so I don't even know. You know. <laughs> but um, so, so I, when you're building a team, it's really important to make sure that you have personalities that can mesh. It's not rocket science. And so it's going to be up to Greg to find that balance of who's playing well. And then also who fits within the group and, and can solve problems for you in any different situation. Cause you're probably going to need 15 or 16 of your guys to get through three group games, maybe more. So it's going to be interesting for the, for the seven or eight guys that aren't playing, are they going to be a help or a hindrance? And that's something you have to figure out with your coaching staff. 
I saw Luca De La Torre. I know Tommy. you both are happy about that. Got three minutes against Real Madrid in hey, a, a four-one loss. Upwards. But <laughs> hey, same with Matthew Hoppy going up, yeah, guys. Coming Get up, more minutes. Going up. <laughs> more minutes. Um, Joe Scally, ninety minutes against Hertha Hertha Berlin in a in a one-zero win. So again, a right back who's getting consistent minutes in the Bundesliga. What what's his potential? Do you, do you see him? I know he struggled in June, but do you see? Okay, he had his moment. It, it's we're going to give him another opportunity in September. Do you think he gets in in September, considering he's playing every week uh, in the Bundesliga? I don't know. I think that he probably deserves a look. But if you have Dest, if you have Cannon, who got another 90 minutes with Boa Vista, if you have a Yedlin that you're really thinking is going to be the guy, do you bring Cannon a Sally didn't, in and get Cannon, Cannon didn't have a good but, June either. No, he did uh, Well. There's something about Cannon I like. I, I don't know if I'm – maybe he's my my stand, my quiet stand that, that I think that um, – there's something defensively that I really like about his game that, that mm-hmm. makes a big difference. Uh, I got nothing. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've got this podcast, though, if you want to be on it. Yeah, man, why not? Yeah, <laughs> How are you doing? You all right? <laughs> he I'm said, Jimmy. why not? What's up? What's your name? This is epic, by the way. Yeah. Jim, for, for those of you listening, Jimmy is out front – of Old Trafford in, in Manchester, <laughs> and people are just coming up to him. He's offering them the chance to get on the podcast. He said, yeah. "Why not?" Well, at first it was Jimmy like chatting with fans of Jimmy. If you you know Jimmy's been oh, yes. been, been in the space for a long time, and now Jimmy's making friends while on the on the uh, new friends. So you know he's doing he's really doing the Lord's work out there. I, I don't know whether to, I don't want to I don't want to ignore anybody when they're like right here, but I'm like well, I'm doing I'm doing the pod, man. Yeah, you got your headphones on, you know what I mean? You just got to act like And and he's recycling, (laughs) which is awesome. He's getting people to recycle. This is great. Look, here we go. Oh, thank you. You know, it's part of it. You're welcome. Tell him thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Saving saving the earth, man. Appreciate you. Yeah. Um, So I don't know. I I guess uh, with regard to Cannon and Scally and all that, I just feel like. um, Oh, he did a sly there. He did. It was pretty. pretty I mean, Scally, Scally, Jimmy is one that it's hard for me because. You only look back to the last performances. He's obviously got the potential because he's playing weekly in the Bundesliga again. And last year he did for a good while as well with starting. And so when I look at him now, you think like, yeah, it, he needs to continue to have – it would be weird to have a guy who's playing consistently in the Bundesliga not continue to get more chances with the national team because a number of guys take some time to – to uh, uh, now they're cleaning up. For, yeah. for those of you that are that – are, uh, Jimmy's muted us, but for those of you who are not – uh, watching this visually, <laughs> Jimmy set up his his podcast uh, in a trash can in front of a trash can, and that trash can is now being cleaned out so that they can refill that trash can. So uh, we are seeing it. we are seeing it all in in real time, and he's dancing in the background now uh, while it's muted. So yeah, I'll ask please. I'll ask Charlie this until we we yeah we, please we get do. this Charlie for for Joe Scally. I mean, you and I both came into the national team at different periods, mm-hmm. Jimmy as well, and sometimes you're brought in on potential sometimes you live up to it sometimes maybe you you fall short right when when we look at uh all of our performances that we've had with the national team but you go back to your club environment and you keep on grinding to get more looks more call-ups and you keep developing as a player so do you think mm-hmm. joe scally in this short of a window could have made the leaps needed to 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 be in the conversation for the national team again or or do you think it's a little bit of a long-term project still no i think in the conversation absolutely if if how many times have we seen someone get a, an opportunity with the national team for the first time and 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 then take off and never have to worry about their place again? That's very rare. Typically, you got to... Pulisic, you, Michael Bradley. Uh, but it's typically very rare. Yeah, it is very, very rare. And it's because it, because where you come in, you know, and, and where you're going to be, obviously, that's that's your, hopefully, your entire career of, of, of you know, club career is the same as the national team. Rarely is, but that window of you coming from potential to to seeing out that potential of being right. that the peak of your career, it's certainly a, a, a different, uh, you know, it's an arc. So you definitely want to have second chances. And There's when I think about, there is a lot of factors. When I think about versatility, again, Joe Scali makes a lot of sense to me, just as in his ability to come in and, and do a job that I think, you know, maybe it's as good as Joe can uh, or not Joe Cannon, Reggie Cannon is, but, um, but yeah, I don't think the, flexibility. but isn't it, isn't it about trust though? There's, there's a trust factor too, where did Scali do enough in the June window for, for Greg to trust him in those no, moments. he did to be not. able to trust him in different things. And that's the thing. When you look at a Reggie Cannon or a Yedlin, I think that well, they have a different Well, you can say the same thing trust. for Sargent, right? 
That's true. That's true. But I'm just saying, I think there's a, a trust factor there. Like are, at this point in the, in the game, where we're only a few months away from the start of the World Cup, are we going to go with this player? Yes, he's playing well in the Bundesliga. Yes, he's playing with a big club with Munch and Gladbach. Well, are you going to go with somebody you, you just know a little bit better in, in certain moments and that you've trusted in World Cup qualifying and, and, and in ways that you haven't trusted Scali, that same type of responsibility? I'm using Scali as an example, but I think there's a <laughs> hey, few things there that can Hey, Jimmy, uh, hold on. Yo. We got a new comment that came in that says your new nickname is Jimmy Trash Can Conrad, which is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's so uh, good, Jimmy. Cream, trash can, cream, can. <laughs> cream cheese to trash can. Bring me back to cream cheese. I want to be cream cheese. Uh, oh god, uh, that's amazing. It, it, it doesn't get better than that. No, than this. that's right. Um, I have nowhere else to set up the camera without it being, you know. Otherwise, I'm holding it and walking around, and that's. I didn't so, bring a so tripod or anything. We're we're about a month away from the first uh, of the September friendlies. With all these new new players um, coming into form, some guys getting new opportunities. Kevin Paredes played 14 minutes for for Wolfsburg against Schalke in a nil nil draw. So that's a, another American season debut uh, for him. Getting yeah. up there. Um, who who makes this roster that that hasn't been involved in a while? Wow. I mean, I think I think Sargent and Tim Ream are probably the two on the tip of my tongue uh, as possibilities that could get a, get a look. I'm curious about Ricardo Pepe. Like, is he just going to bring him in to get him a confidence boost? You know, we've seen coaches do that before. It depends on the numbers you're bringing in. I mean, he could he could theoretically bring 30 players. Well, if he's going to bring him to a World Cup, by the way, he's got to bring – like, it'd be weird yeah, right, to right, not right. bring him in and then bring him in under right. potentially even worse circumstances come World Cup time, right? So if he sees him with, that, like you said, trust thing or part of the group, he's going to come in because he's probably got a, a vision of him making that 26. And Brandon Vasquez would be another one. I think that would uh, – potentially warrant that that's maybe been on the outside and or very much on the outside and getting his opportunity so i could see uh vasquez reem and sergeant being my top three is the ones that have been on the outside and maybe coming in what do you guys how, think what, how, are, your, what well, are your three my, my thing is how far off is is austin trusty if he's playing every match for birmingham 90 minutes in a back three and he's playing yeah, that, left, that left center back is is he is there any chance for him to get to get into a friendly, the friendly roster. Center back, such a different position. I think you, you, you want to no? see a lot of those guys. I don't know. I don't know. He might just be too late at the center back yeah. position. Whereas uh, we'll reference what happened with, with uh, back in 2010 with Bob and Greg mentioned it too. When we asked him about it, the three players, they felt good. Just taking a flyer on was the strikers. You got a bunch of hot hands. Let's just throw them out there and hope that they are still hot when the world cup comes around. So that's a little bit easier than what's the hot hand as a center back. You know, I think, I think Cameron Carter Vickers will probably get called in. He's been solid. He earned that trust over June. I thought in a way that, that maybe Scally didn't. So we don't know how these guys are training either, how they fit within the group. So there's a lot of question marks, but uh, I mean, Jimmy on the, on the, on the flip so side, guys playing well right now. Clarence Goodson made the world cup in 2010. And, yeah, and, I'm and still bitter about that. while he had, yeah, <laughs> same Jimmy, I'm right there with you, you know, we'll cry about it together, but, uh, uh, but he was, he wasn't, you know, I, he played in the gold cup, which was a clear B team in 2009. He had, I think he'd gotten yeah. capped in 2008, but 2010 yeah, yeah, yeah. was sort of that, you know, kind of a late addition and, and, and went in there granted, you know, your, your yourself and, um, Danny, um, blanking on, uh, on, on his name, Caliph? um, Caliph. And, you know, yeah. there was others. Jay, Jay Demerit had emerged behind Bocanegra and, and Onyewu. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, in terms of that fourth or fifth or whatever, he, he had snuck in there kind of with a late, late form going to Denmark and kind of change the scenery and whatever. So it wasn't, he, he wasn't a super big part of, of, of it, of the national team up to that point. No, no, he wasn't. So I, I that's a good point with Clarence. Um, I think sometimes some players play their way out of their spots, and maybe I fell into that category because I didn't really take advantage of the opportunities that Bob gave me, especially at the very end. Do, do, and it was, do you, have, uh, you have Roy Keane over your left shoulder? <laughs> I hope not. You like can tell I'm Jimmy's a defender because he's got no look over his shoulder. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? exactly. <laughs> have, have you had a chance to say hello to your former teammate, Sir Alex Ferguson? <laughs> oh, man. No, no, I haven't yet. Uh, hopefully I'll see him tonight. If he, I don't know. It's going to be – could be a rough night. I mean, last time they played here – Liverpool won five zero, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm expecting a different result. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's possible Heath. I mean, that's but that's still a fourth or fifth center back, and it's not somebody you. So I guess Austin Trusty ha- has a chance, but if he's not called into this window, then he's going to have to hope that the next World Cup cycle is the one for him. I, I I'm with you in in terms of I think Sargent does make this this camp because mm-hmm. he he's performing and he's we we know what Sargent is when he plays centrally one, but more importantly. Mm-hmm. And a team that's not forced to just defend, where he's just running and yeah. the team doesn't have possession. When they have possession, he's playing central. And that's why I was against him going to Norwich, because that's all you were going to do is play long balls and defend. And, and it's mm-hmm. survival mode. We saw that. What happened when he was in Germany playing in the same situation. When he is on a team that is a better fit, that is more on the front foot, I think that's when you start to see the best of, of Josh Sargent. So, well, well that's yeah. why Charlie, like if, if he had, if somebody said, Hey, uh, Norwich just got relegated. Josh Sargent's leaving uh Werder Bremen. He's going to go to Norwich. I'd be like, great club coming down. They got more money, more funds. It's going to be chaos. I think that actually plays in a Josh Sargent, Josh Sargent going into a premier league. That's a premier league team that has 0.01% chance of surviving. That's a bad move, right? Now we're in a situation. Yeah. He's still got to deal with Timo Puki as, as Jimmy said, in terms of competition, but yeah, he's only 22 years old. So why wouldn't you bring him in? It's We've crazy. seen the quality that yeah, he has. Yeah. We've seen what he could do in the Bundesliga before. So it's not like all of that's gone. He just hasn't been in a good club situation. I, I honestly feel like these next couple of weeks are huge for him, Charlie, because if he can continue this momentum, it's going to be undeniable. Greg's going to have to call him in. There's no question. Yep. It's kind of similar to what Brendan Aronson's doing. Like, okay, he was maybe a spot starter for us, but then he he scores a bunch of goals. He's obviously being influential and making a difference for his club in the Premier League against a big club like Chelsea. And now you have to start him. Like he, you can't not start the guy. So Josh Sargent, if he can continue the momentum, uh, I don't, it's going to be impossible for Greg not to call him in. And that's that's he's just got to hope that his manager, the Dean Smith, I think at Norwich, gives him the continues to give him a run at the number nine spot. I, I will say this though, I think we're all in agreement that Tyler Adams. We knew he was so important to this team, but after that performance against Chelsea, where he's taking down Raheem Sterling, Mason Mount, these players that you're going to be facing in a World Cup match. When he's doing it in English Premier League competition, yeah, and just yeah, how he yeah. was all over the place, that he is indispensable. And two, if he ever went down injured, who who's playing there? Hmm. Yeah, who's no, who, who's question. his backup? Is it is it? Because I, I, yeah, Kevin I don't Acosta, know. it can't like he he's filled in well in cocky calf, but. In terms of being a true six, Kellen Acosta is not not a true six. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I mean, you can't really ask Musa to do that either. Um, no. Yeah, I mean that's that's one of those spots where maybe James Sands becomes a little bit more valuable because he can play multiple positions and is comfortable in that spot and is good at holding the ball under pressure. I don't know. It's a lot of questions. Again, these are all great problems to have. That we have so much of our talent playing well at a good time. Now it's up to Greg to earn the money that he gets. So I'm hey, out, everybody. Though I got to bounce. I got to bounce. Thanks for having me. All right, me. cool. Enjoy. Trash cans out, everybody. Trash cans out. Jimmy Conrad. Trash Jim audience. Cream Cheese Appreciate Trash Can Hollywood. Conrad. Enjoy. He's out. Man. Are you going to take us to break then? Yeah. Let's, this, let's go to commercial you? break. We'll be back ju- in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. We found your daughter. She's alive. Mister? It's mommy. Four years is a long time. Welcome home. I think something's going on with Esther. She seemed different. Since she got back, there's constant lying. There's outbursts of anger. Orphan First Kill, rated R, streaming August 19th on Paramount+. Plus. Welcome back, everybody, to In Soccer We Trust Podcast with your boy, Charlie Chuckwagon Davies, Heath Hollywood Pierce, Jimmy Conrad was just live. At Jimmy Old Tra- in front of Conrad. Old Trafford, Jimmy Trash Can Conrad <laughs> was doing his thing, um, uh, taking trash, taking names, inviting people on the pod. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, but if if we're going to kind of sum up this past weekend, Heath, what stands out to you? Again, for me, it's it's we had some of our usual, not I don't want to say usual suspects, but players that we expect to play with the national team regardless, right? Which is your Brandon and Aaron saying your Tyler Adams, fantastic performances. Again, still no, no time um, for Matt Turner at Arsenal. I don't expect him to get any time outside the cup competitions, Arsenal top of the league. Uh, but for me, it's 
Balogun, again, I'm not sure what his status is. Could be a great last second, uh, last second scored in France this weekend, started, played 64, 65 minutes. I can't remember the exact number, but um, another top performance for him. Again, he's sort of on the outside looking in, but a player of his quality and his potential, why wouldn't, like, I could see Greg make, you know, you're going to get a chance, especially with 26 players, to make one or two uh, exceptions all, along the way. James Sands continues to play regularly at Rangers. I remember when Rangers was a club that if you were at Rangers, you were going into the national team always, right? When you think about um, yes. Moa Du, Demarcus Beasley, um, Bocanegra. Bocanegra, you also had uh, Bedoya. Like, this is a, a, a big club at, at certain times. Again, Cameron Carter Vickers got 90 as well. Um, Malik Tillman didn't play uh, this weekend, but did dress. And then the other one, if, if I can find it, Conrad De La Fuente for, for Olympiacos mm -hmm. uh, started and played. Olympiacos, you know, I know the, the Greek Super League isn't what it once was, but in terms of size of club and pressure of playing at a big club, um, historically, Olympiacos is a massive place. So if he's going to continue to get minutes, he was one that when he got some games uh, early last season at uh, in France, you could see a little bit of his form changing. First time he came into the national team, he looked off the pace. Second time he came in, you started to see some flashes when he got on the field and some of that potential that had him at Barcelona uh, through through their youth system or La Masia. So he's one as well that I think about. Um, and then we've got a lot of comments about Sam Vines. They didn't play this mm -hmm. weekend, but um, but it is, it is another player when we talk about uh, our depth charts of somebody that uh, could be making a, a case for themselves. Who You were a left back, so mm -hmm. what what's... The potential of Sam Vines. What what's his outlook in your mind? How how does he fit with this group? Because when I see him, I go, oh, does he have enough strength? This yeah. is defending good enough. Yes, he he can time his runs into the attacking half, similar to Anthony Robinson, probably not at the same tempo and velocity, but I just feel that defensively, he lacks the the timing of the challenges and just mm -hmm. the ability to, to to mix it up with, with some of the physical. Um, outside wingers he'll have to to face yeah that's i mean i, I think you have you, you make some really good points there i think it comes down to do you have enough tools for the international game we know he's got good feet but he's not going to have what i think is the is is the speed that you're going to see from from jedi uh which is both in the attack as well as in transition um that ability to play the physical game to win the the duels the battles in terms of different opponents right we, we talk about this national team and the reason that jedi was so important for our qualifying is because his, uh, both his technical and physical game could adjust to the demands of an international match, whether you're having to defend more, whether you're having to attack more, whether you're having to get physical into the challenge. And in full transparency, I haven't watched a ton of Royal Antwerp over the last, you know, whatever months to, to really know what's the form, what is his development. You know, I, I'm looking at him still somewhat through the lens of when he's been called into the national team and not so much of what he could be now. Uh, so I'm, I'm certainly kind of almost giving a little bit too much respect to Jedi because I'm seeing him more often than, than, than Sammy vines, but, right. but certainly, um, and when the you level think of about competition, yeah. And the level of competition, but when you exactly. And, and, but when you think about the season he had last year and the qual and, and how good Roy Antwerp were, um, and then, and then obviously going into this year and the fact that you're talking about 26 players, right? So when I talked about versatility before, which I think left me off the roster of saying, okay, I'm a backup. I'm a backup left back for this national team, but you also got Beasley who's starting to play left back at the moment. You've got uh, Carlos Bocanegra who ended up playing left back in the world mm -hmm. cup. You know, you don't need to bring a, se a second left back, but now with 26, you can actually bring two in every position plus have depth into other places. So if Greg is saying, well, I don't want to look at Serginho. I don't want to ever have to put Serginho Des on the left side. Or I don't ever want to have to put jo uh, Joe Scally on the left side mm -hmm. or, or a player that can fill in. Then maybe Sammy Vines does, does have a shout for, for a call-up if you want to go traditional because you're like, oh, I don't want to feel tempted to have to take Serginho Dest out of there because now i got to put something there that I don't love and that sort of thing where he's not as good on the left as he is on the right. And if he's healthy and fit, he's our number one on the right. So why would he go to the left type of thing? So there is certain arguments you can make for that. But again, uh, I mean, what's your what's your take on, on traditional two players in every position before you go into the depth of the rest of the squad? Well... I think it depends on the quality of player at the end of the day, because if if the second choice is not that strong, then I'd rather bring in a player who can add me, add something to the team in a different spot. Maybe it's another striker. Maybe it's another attacking midfielder, uh, 
maybe it's the case of bringing a Jordan Pifuk on the squad for someone who is just a finisher in the box. And and to be to be fair, in his first goal, he had to to make a run in behind, and that's not something that we we typically see from Jordan Pifuk. So he makes a run in behind, he gets played in, in into the channel, into the space, takes uh, I think two touches, and then finishes bottom left. Mm-hmm. A fantastic goal. And then the second uh, goal for, for his squad, he assisted. There's a ball played to him. Uh, he gets fouled. The ref, the referee allows play on as he plays it out to the wide area, a wing, like where Brent Aronson, Timothy Weah, maybe Christian Pulisic would be. And and that, that winger scores the goal. So I wouldn't mind seeing another striker put on the squad in the 20, in, in, in the 26 man roster, as opposed to, um, a, a defender who maybe is probably not going to play and and is physically limited. Um, you know, so I, I look at other players who could possibly play there. I know we we talked about Tyler Adams who can play right back sometimes. Kellen Costa could play right back. There's not too many who can play can play a position and then left back as well. I mean, how many left footed center backs do we have? Well, none. At the well, you know, yeah, you'd have John Brooks and uh, Tim Ream, the two players that we, we <laughs> who, that sort who? of like replace themselves uh, or or are interchangeable in terms of they bring unbelievable qualities in certain ways, but ones that I don't think fit Greg's plans. Well, on allergic, how he wants to allergic play. to the touchline. Yeah. yeah, allergic to the touchline and, and allergic to the to to the high line. Uh, it, it, uh, very, very much so. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's a predicament. I see some people saying Dewan Jones. Um left back for New England Revolution. He's a, a physical specimen. I mean, you talk about someone who who gets up and down the line, strong as can be, uh, good in the attacking third, has really developed uh, under Bruce Arena. And now European clubs are, are looking at him, uh, a few Bundesliga clubs. So that could potentially be a player who who – eventually becomes left back but i think it's it's too too short of a turnaround to to be the left back for before world cup but i anticipate him maybe getting to move to europe after this year and then maybe in 2026 that's one guy that has a lot of tools and and i think if developed and pushed correctly and put in the right situation he could be eventually be um you know pl- playing for the u.s men's national team in that position but um weston mckinney uh looks like he he will be playing today against Sampdoria uh this afternoon for us uh what what's your take on Weston at Juve Well it looks like you know again like you said he's he's, he's probably into uh the starting lineup it's Weston again I I continue to just feel comfortable with him if he's healthy mm-hmm. We saw Weston not play for a while and come back to the national team. And you just saw all the energy that he brings to the national team. It's just so many qualities that he that he is and he just has an ability to be impactful when he's on the field. And if, maybe if it's not over 90 minutes in terms of, you know, the buildup play or whatever, he's getting in the box and he's finding a way that makes him uh, indispensable to this national team, whether he, you know, whether when it really came down to it, if he wasn't playing for months, whether you started him or not, he's kind of has that, that engine right at a minimum, which I think is really, really helpful. Um, and so, you know, hopefully he can continue this run of form. Uh, so he, it, okay, he's in the he's in the starting eleven. I did read that in the comments, but I hadn't seen it on live score in terms of confirmed because their game starts. And, and this in is 58. Juve, yeah. <laughs> like he's he's in the midfield at Juve. So if you have a player like Weston, we know what he can bring. Tough tackler, but also those late mm-hmm. runs in the box, such a, a a presence on set pieces, both attacking and defending. It's impossible in my mind for him not to be in the starting eleven. So. Tyler Adams and Weston are are set are are locked. They are locked. Now Eunice Musa, we both agree. So much talent at times really lacks a, a, a finished product. And we we're happy that he's playing centrally for Valencia, but still you, you watch him at times. And you're like, oh, where's the goal? Or where's the assist? Or where's that final pass? Or or why didn't you make that decision? But everything else is clean. He he's he is arguably the best uh, player on the ball in terms of dribbling at people and creating space, breaking lines on the dribble. And, and just a uh, very, I love his reactions, his balance, his first touch, but any, his creativity. But at the end of the day, sometimes you need that position 
to be a little bit more dynamic. You need that player to be someone who can score goals, who can create more, more of a, has more of a, I guess, a number 10 uh, instinct in, in some of those qualities. So if he were to be displaced, is it Gio Reyna or is it Brent Aronson in your mind? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, what do you think? I mean, it's, it's, it's 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 the first time that I can say in a long time that I am having trouble putting eleven players on the field. And we know Charlie, you've put fourteen on mm-hmm. on your last starting eleven. You know, yeah, uh, you put I think you had eighteen. <laughs> no, <laughs> you had you had fourteen players in our starting eleven, which is wild. Uh, Thomas Rongen had like sixteen oh uh, in gosh. our starting eleven. Yeah, uh, but but uh, this is this is the hard part, and this is where the luxury and may sound like a cop out of opponent based lineups, right? Of who you're going to play because Giorena doesn't love to press high and press all the time. Um, uh, um, Pulisic doesn't love to press high and press all the time. This national team has struggled with what I think is the Brendan Aronson uh, strength. And that's pressing together, pressing at the right time, pressing in transition. That's four or five seconds, whatever, after, after like, or whatever, two seconds after you lose the ball, can you press and win it back or force a predictable ball so that the team can win the back ball back in a good position. So you're not having to track all the way back. Right. Um, and that's where I think Brennan Aronson has his qualities. But if the team isn't going to be able to play like that always, then it's less effective, right? If, if all Brennan Aronson is doing is pressing, we saw Tyler Adams a couple of times in the Premier League season, over pressing players aren't up coming up underneath him. One pass, two passes, goodbye. And now you're having to run back 40 yards. That's not a good, that, that's a bad problem to have, right? If you have a mix of the way in which the team is going to press. So that commitment to press, I think is going to dictate who you have on the field and when, if you play a little more neutral, then, then Brendan Aronson is a little bit more replaceable. But if you're going to play into that high press or play into that transition game, then he has to be on the field all the time. You know, in the comments, we've seen a lot of, what about Aronson as a false nine? What about Christian as a false nine? To get all of your best attacking players on the pitch, even though probably none of them can really hold up the ball well in terms of there's a ball clipped in from center back, you got to hold it up, and center backs are, are, are coming up from behind you. So I think... And a game where a team is defending in large portions of the match, you have a lot of possession. You can you can get it done. So what, what comes to mind is a, a team like Iran. If they were sitting back in a low block and making it very difficult to break them down, it's not it's not a bad idea to have a false nine because you you want movement and, and quick combination play. And therefore, when you have the ball and that that might be a great opportunity to, to introduce the false nine in that type of situation. But I don't know if you can all, all of a sudden just start a false nine in a World Cup and not have not done it at all throughout <laughs> the World Cup qualifying in these yeah. friendlies. Jesus Ferrer can do that. So it's not it's not a, a bad position. However, against in England, where sometimes you're under a, a immense pressure, you need someone who can hold up the ball. Yeah. With, do with, you think with, we have the quality to play with a false nine? Where Because, you know, when you look at the gold standard of the false nine, obviously mm-hmm. Manchester City, different now with 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 Holland there. But if you look at the past, whether you know take uh, Kun Aguero out of it, but anybody, Kevin De Bruyne, whoever played in that position, Gabriel Jesus at, at, at times, you have to be so good on the ball in combination play of knowing yes. when to speed the game up, when to slow the game down to break these lines of pressures because teams. When you, when you play with a false nine are comfortable getting behind you and you've got to be able to have that creativity. And I feel like the national team actually gets up the field into good spots. It's those one, two, three, four passes in and around the box, the execution of these dart, little darting runs and the ability to play those that I feel like allows teams to now counterattack against that. Well, you know, it's funny that we think about the counterattack and, and players getting on the ball and combining. But I also would add... You know, for instance, Leeds uh, United had a, he has a, a former player, Danny Mills, who says, you know, Brandon Aronson has had a, a mesmerizing start, but chill out. I, I doubt that this is going to continue. And that comes to me as like the, the recency bias, because mm-hmm. everyone's like, oh, he's got to be starting. But what if we go, you know, a couple more matches, he does well, and then you naturally have that dip that everybody's talking about in England. Yeah, okay, the Americans are doing well. You know, yeah, yeah things are, are flying for, for Tyler Adams, for 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 Brendan Aronson. But it always comes at some point when you hit that, oh, the energy levels start to, to drop and they can't they can't play at that amazing pace 
with with that press that they play, that high energy, running around crazy, and, and it frustrated Chelsea. But at some point, you hit you hit that that. Oh my god, my body, my body's taking a taking a beating, and, my body and you start weary. to slow down. My body weary. So, is that the point? The the moment? Do you wait until you know October to say? Okay, maybe Gio Reyna is starting to come to form. Maybe Bern Aronson slows down a little bit and is not so much uh, crushing it. Uh, for me, at this point, there's certain players that you say you got to wait till form, and there's certain players I don't care how Tyler Adams is playing. It he's he's going to be playing on the field. I don't care as long as they're healthy. Tyler Adams and Weston McKinney are starters. As long as Yunus Musa. I think he he he's and he's playing. I think he's on the pitch, and Brandon Aronson at this point has got to start because you talk about press and and playing a high line. Greg Berhalter is is so moved by making his team press, mm-hmm. having a high line. Brandon Aronson, that's what he does. It's in his DNA. So I think he he has to be a starter at this point. When you play against Chelsea and you do it like that, then it, it wasn't just the goal. The goal was was more impressive about his his ability to continue to press. Like there's not there's not a, the, a there's never a play that he thinks he doesn't have a chance to win the ball back or influence. Right. That is contagious within the group. He has to be on the pitch at this point. Um, so I think the nine this is the big question, and you got to wait until November. I, I don't think you can say we have a set nine because it's it's it fluctuates so much from, from match to match and, and some players going into for, into form, some players not playing just no one grabbed that, posi- that, that position with both hands, except for Jesus Ferrer because he continues to produce. Now, if Jesus Ferrer was just playing for FC Dallas, but not scoring goals and not producing, then you say, but at the moment he got his opportunity in world cup qualifying and in MLS, he's continuing to play and he's scoring goals. So I think right now he's got the key. I like that. It's not a bad shot. I mean, I agree with you in terms of uh, just our 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 ninths or even our attackers because we still need to wait and see. I don't. I don't love the idea of. of we talk about this a lot, right? We create all these stupid hy- hypotheticals that drive people crazy, which is like, well, what if Pulisic doesn't play for the next three months? Does he start in your national team? And it's it's really hard to create magical circumstances, like you said, because it all is going to come down to November and form and the morale of the team and how we feel best to get uh, results against opponents. Again, you're talking about a group stage, right? We're not doing 14 games in World Cup qualifying. You're talking about three games and how you navigate a group ver- to get out of that group, whether you want to finish first or second. Obviously, you want to get out by any means, but how you go into your second game might be a little more conservative, knowing that like, hey, nobody's playing for a draw in these games, but the risk we are taking in match one, we want to expose ourselves a little bit more to force them to have to defend more, right? We want to dictate the style of play and force them to have to make adjustments to second game, depending, you know, what you got the result, what your result is in the first game, you might be a little more neutral and saying, Hey, we're going to actually sit back with our fullback. So it makes more sense to have a Deandre Yedlin play at right back because he's a little more conservative. And we know that he's going to put in that defensive shift. And so even with your forwards, it might come to, well, how are we going to get out of that mess now? Right. We're not going to play out. Do we need a target striker? Do we need to have a false nine? Do we, and all of that's going to come into play based on the results that you need as perfect as we want. We always think that we've got our starting 11 going to the world cup and then 20 plus players play over a world cup and right. you never expect it. You never think it right. You, you see the rosters get selected and you're like, okay, that guy's emergency situations only. And then match two, he's in the starting lineup. Um, and so a lot of it's going to come down to, you know, again, how we do or how we start that world cup as well. I spoke, I see a lot of comments about uh, Timo Weah's injury. I spoke to him yesterday, actually, and he, he was saying he's feeling pretty good. They're not clearing him, but he feels good. And so I said, I've been there before. Uh, he He's very optimistic that he'll get back on the pitch uh, in September. So, um, you know, that's that's also good news to hear. And uh, for, for everybody w- wondering about Weston McKinney and, and his match against Sampdoria coming up, Remember, you can watch it on Paramount Plus. It's the only place to stream every minute of every Serie A match, and you can you can quickly and easily sign up for your own very uh, your own very uh, your own <laughs> very own account right here, right now, with a free one month trial by going to ParamountPlus.com forward slash Italy. Just click the Try It Free button and use promo code Italy for instant access to the best Italian club soccer available across 
all of your devices. Visit ParamountPlus.com forward slash Italy and start streaming today. So if case you want to see Weston McKinney uh, continue to, to, to produce for Juve, uh, sign up today. And remember, they just locked in Champions League for, for, for another long period of time. So um, not a bad not a bad subscription. And with that, I say... Hey, Charlie, don't wrap it up yet because guess what? We got to throw... We got to have uh, producer Alex throw up a few of these comments just to remind people uh, of how, how good of a job you did uh, hosting this one with Jimmy on the road. So look, we got great episode, guys. One of my favorites for sure. From our guys flying right now to Jimmy's trash can, Conrad. This one was great. What else do we got? <laughs> what else do we got, Alex? Instant ISWT classic episode right here. We've got more. We got more, Chuck. Just to build up your ego going into the rest oh, of your Monday. No, Best stop. ISWT episode yet made. And not just because of Jimmy's new nickname. So, I mean, I don't want to put it to vote because that might upset Jimmy as to like who's the, who the new host is on this, <laughs> on this one. You know, Jimmy don't do steps that to Jimmy. One. Hey, this is what it's like for, for anybody that Chuck's ad transition smoother than Aronson's turn on Cooley Ball yesterday. Oh, my gosh. I got to say. For those of you who, who haven't been in those competitive environments, this is what it's like to be in the national team. You know what I mean? You pull up, you pull up with one hamstring injury, aka Jimmy on the road right now. Player steps into your position, aka Charlie Davies, and now we got ourselves a competition for who's the who's the new host. You know, we, we got instant classics right now going yeah. up on 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 comments, Charlie. You, you, we we don't want Jimmy to come back and crumble. Okay, we yeah. want him to stay confident. So let's just say he's hey, away from Jimmy, home. You know, he's you. on the road. Yeah. He's fragile yeah. right now, away from his family. His network. He didn't get enough can, sleep last yeah. night. He yep. said like jet lag. Mm -hmm. um, the nutrition hasn't been proper. So there's a lot of excuses here for for Jim. Uh, we'll let it slide. But uh, final thoughts, Heath. No, I mean, again, a great weekend. It's it's a long way to go to the World Cup, but the signs are pointing in the right direction that our players, who we talked about in the offseason, needing minutes to contribute, to not just be informed, but to develop as players, uh, it's 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 moving in the right direction. And now, when we talk about it also, my, my final thought on that is the, 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 the pool of players is getting bigger and bigger uh, right in front of our eyes so that if we have a couple players that didn't play or didn't get the minutes, Malik Tillman doesn't play, it's not the end of the world, right? You go back six, seven years ago, we'd be in a panic of anybody in our pool who wasn't playing heading into a World Cup. But now this pool is bigger and I like it. What about you? Uh, my final thoughts are I'm excited that the the forward pool is is starting to to produce. Um, you know, Josh Sargent. I yes, you know, for me, I want to see strikers do well. I want player, I, I'm a supporter of the US men's national team. I don't want players to struggle. I want players to do well. So when I start to see players who have gone through a tough time or in a difficult situation, fight through it and start scoring goals and producing. That's what it's about. That pumps me up. So for a player like Josh Sargent, who was hyped up so early on and everyone was like, okay, here's the next big striker. He's going to crush it to falling flat and giving nothing, getting opportunities, not producing confidence goes and it's shot, not getting opportunities at the club. So you're, you hit rock bottom as a player. How do you fight back? Where, what's your resilience? What's going to drive you? What's the focus? And for Josh Sargent, man, he's had such a, a resurgence. And, and it, I know a lot has to come with just being in a different position. Now he's playing central. Now his team has the ball. They're, they're the top, you know, one of the top dogs in the English championship, as opposed to being a minnow in the Premier League and just hoping for survival. And, and it's just a fight instead of actually playing the game. So I love that. Uh, Jordan P. Folk, again, trying to prove people wrong. That's all you can do as a player. You get an opportunity, go out and produce. Forget what people, forget the noise. Maybe use the noise as motivation, but don't let it detract from, from your progress or, or or your desires or your dreams. So I love that mm -hmm. P. Folk and Sargent have, have, have also produced. And Haji Wright, it didn't go well for him. All you can do is focus on your 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 games. So keep scoring. So all the hey, strikers, hey, let's hey, go. Hey, Charlie, I gotta say, man, Jimmy would be real upset that your final thought were a, was a final was a final sub episode of the final of the whole episode. You know what hey, I mean? That was I, a whole episode I, in itself. I man. gotta take advantage of it while I can. Jeez, um, eating up all the airwaves. And and final shout out to my parents. Um, they they watch the show. They're huge fans of of, oh, I of love you, it. Heath and uh, and 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 Jimmy Trash Can Conrad. So um, <laughs> what a name! Yeah, what a name! Shout out to um, your parents, though. Appreciate uh, the support. Sh sh shout out to to my parents. Thank you uh, for, for for supporting and watching us. And to all you YouTube fans, we love you. I see all the comments. I pay attention to to all of you. Uh, respect. We we value 
you guys coming in, chirping, letting us know what's funny, what you like, what you what you want us to talk about. Uh, much love. Um, so, hey Charlie, last thought. Christopher Walken said walked away ten minutes ago, and Chuck is still on his final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Respect. <laughs> oh, love it. Um, well, that's it for this episode of In Soccer We Trust. For real, this was amazing. Uh, we can't wait to see you guys on Thursday. Much love. <laughs>